Great Bar Primary School, Birmingham. Senior leaders, teachers, TAs, parents, governors, and of course the pupils are converging on another day. The network they are working within is complex. Today we're following just one thread of the network, the one that delivers learning and progression in maths. There's not a moment to waste. So with assembly in full swing, Louise, assistant head teacher, is gathering the TA team together, refining their training to deliver maths to those pupils at the lower ability end of the spectrum. I've decided to look at that today um, so that we can help the children move forward with their learning. Today she's introducing the DFES materials, supporting children with gaps in their mathematical knowledge. The actual principles of the materials are that they're very flexible to suit the children's needs. Um, they share what each activity is about with you, so there's a learning objective for each activity, and they highlight the, the tasks and the uh, vocabulary that you should use. Um, they're all geared to following an error or a misconception that the children can have over each of the maths targets. So if you look at the tracking sheets, that's the, the, there are two sheets which have got the title Tracking Children's Learning. Because of the way the school is set up with the special needs resource base running within the mainstream school, all classes have got children who have got some sort of physical or learning difficulty that's quite significant. And therefore the actual uh, ability of the class can be very wide. The teachers have to cater for not just normal differentiation within the classroom, but the extra differentiation of the child who's got specific learning difficulties or a significant physical disability. And the teaching assistants learn, have learned to help the teacher very much to break the targets that the teacher plans down even further. One, six. Is that right? Good boy. The collaboration between the class teacher and the teaching assistant is, has got to be there. You can look at it from both sides. You can either look at it from the skills. I'm doing that skill. The child I'm working with can't do it. Let's have a look and see what they can't do. Or you can look at it from the misconception and say, this child can only begin counting at one and look back at the skill to see what the skill is that they can't do. So you can use it either way in your assessment of when you're working with children. And I think that would be really useful for some children, because some children, particularly like a couple that you've got, Cathy, in Year One, who really are struggling with some of the basic yeah. reception objectives, they suggest that you use it um, three times a week if possible. So it's not every day, but it's not once a week. Once a week is no good because you haven't got the repetition of the teaching. The teaching assistants are very interested in the job that they do and some of them actually attend teacher staff meetings as well as the teaching assistant staff meetings. Um, they want to do the best by the children and they want to support the children to the best level that they can. When they all come together, they all work together and it just raises their ability really to support the children in any way that they can. I think my brain is warmed up to do some maths, so... We've very much been looking and focusing on pupil progress and how we can improve that within maths. We've had lots of meetings with the staff, lots of moderation of work, and we've involved the teaching assistants along with the teachers very heavily. And all of the staff have looked very clearly at what the children are actually doing so they can actually scaffold the learning for the children rather than just provide solutions for the children, helping the children to think and think creatively for themselves. So 33 and 7 must equal 40. But however good the lesson differentiation, there are still some pupils who need one-to-one -one specialist math support. Wave 3 interventions help identify the barriers in these pupils' learning and find an effective way forward. One, two, and two equals... Number's missing there. Six. I have two teaching assistants who are well trained in assessing and they do a lot of assessing both in literacy and numeracy. So these two teaching assistants do, um, do some one-to-one -one individual testing 
um, just to see where the problems are. And then um, with myself and the teaching assistant and the class teacher, we can look at the difficulties, the specific difficulties that the children are actually having and um, give them some specific targets and plan the work accordingly. So from the teaching assistant noticing there's a problem, it's, it's very collaborative and, and we work it out so that the children get the appropriate targets. Do you think these are? Rockets. Okay, how many rockets are there? Six. Good. And how many fish are swimming? Nine. Mm -hmm. Go on then. Nine. What does nine look like? And one more question. What number's missing down there? Right, so how did we get on with Tristan then? I gave him the language of maths, talking about behind, in front, above, smaller than, bigger than, okay. and getting him to put a circle around things or a cross, and once he'd understood what to do, he was very good. And he managed to do all the numbers up to he ten? He counted them. He, he found the missing number on there, right. he identified the numbers, and he counted all these properly and actually pointed to them as he went. Well, that's interesting. So here, he had the right idea. He said six, seven, eight, but he, he counted one, two, three, so the missing one was four. Right, OK. So he's counted how many numbers there are rather yep, than the actual right. number. That's yeah. The schools collected a mountain of data on maths progress. Without it, these children could have slipped through the net. But with it, they hope many will be back on track before they reach Key Stage 2. There's only two and a half hours at school for these nursery children, but amongst all the activity, there's been a careful record kept of each child's progress. OK, going to put some teddies here and we're going to count how many we've got, OK? OK. One, two, three. Good boy, right. Could you come and put one more toy under the blanket for me? Three. And one more. Count them. Count your fingers. Emily. Four. As Emily's key worker, nursery teacher Rachel's making it her business at the end of the session to talk to Mum and explain the next steps in Emily's maths learning journey. And reinforce what we do. Rachel's keen to exploit the potential of the parents to support what she's doing at home. But first, they must understand it. In terms of her mathematical development, I'm very pleased with her progress. That's good. Yeah. Last half term, we really focused on numbers and, and counting and those kinds of skills. She's very confident with her, her knowledge of numbers, number value, number order. And we're moving on now to calculation and addition skills. Oh, okay. Um, in the last few weeks, Emily's really progressed with that. Um, she's using lots of the vocabulary that we'd like her to use, yeah. like more and less and the same. She does show a good interest in her number skills and yeah. her numbers in general. Yeah, she's, I try to involve her as much as possible when we walk into school oh, wonderful. Um, with the house numbers and things like that. Yeah. So I would certainly encourage that, very incidental things that happen yeah. out and about, you know, anything you do see, if she's interested, it's lovely for you to really feed that interest yeah. and encourage yeah. her, so, yeah. you know, carry on with what you're doing. Parents play their part in the school's maths delivery and once a week reception gets a visit from Joshua, a parent and a storyteller. The school encourages parents to come in uh, and help out with their children. Be learning some signs. Uh, the signs come from both from British Sign Language and from Makaton. It goes like this. Five little ducks went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mummy Duck said quack, 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 only four little ducks came back. The learning sort of incidental within, within the song that you do. We don't sit there saying, let's do some number today, but number just comes in it, and so we do, some, we do counting as we're going along. No little ducks came swimming back. 
As part of the process, looking at maths and it being a priority for the school, it was really important that all of the staff and the governors and parents shared the same vision. Parents have been involved in coming into school for Inspire workshops and other meetings to see how their children will be learning in school and how they can support them at home as well. The governors also are fully supportive of the school and very aware of what's happening. We've now finally received the full report for Arrays Online. We were able to download it this week. We've discussed the value added and the improvements for the school, but this is now actually giving us the contextual value added. So we're looking here at all the summer birthdays and all the other aspects that they've taken into account. If the curriculum committee involves just looking at the curriculum um, in school to make sure that um, it's been implemented as the teachers say. I carry out very, various visits. I try to do one a term. I've recently visited school and looked at the key stage one maths. At the end of the day, you say you're governor. Um, you have to see what's going on within the school. It's not just attending meetings. It's to be an act, play an active role in the school as well. And she was looking at Yes, on my recent visit, um, I was pleased to see how confident the children were able to choose the activities they, they were doing and to carry them out very confidently. Mm. And I was really, really pleased to see it in action. Between governors and parents, Sue's widening the learning community. The Termly Inspire workshops have upskilled parents to help their children's maths learning at home, as well as helping them with their own maths gremlins. It's about problem solving, and that comes into all three strands of mathematics in foundation stage. So not only are we asking children to learn facts, we're asking them to be able to use the number, and that's a really important thing throughout the school, that children can start to use logic and start to apply what they've learned about shapes, what they've learned about numbers, and start to apply that to everyday situations and start to solve problems. There we go, that's it. And how many you got there? Two. Two, good boy. Coming in and actually seeing what Joel's been up to is, uh, is really good because, I mean, he talks about school when he comes home, but, you I mean, to actually have hands-on and see what he's doing and be involved, I mean, it's good for him as well. I try and get involved as much as I can, to be fair, whether it's maths or anything else. Um, definitely give me an insight because... It means you can take it home and add things to it or take things out that you think wouldn't work necessarily for your own child. But definitely give me new ideas to help them to learn a bit more while they're at home as well. When she comes home, we can talk about what she's done at school because obviously coming to the workshops, they're involving us more. But then there's new ideas as well. So it's supporting us to support our child. So it's really, really enjoyable, really now. Great Bar have found the knack of harnessing the whole school network to make the most of every day. So perhaps progression in primary maths isn't just to do with what's happening within the classroom, but well beyond it too.